Our 12 news storm trackers delivering some tough news tonight as Port Natchez welcomes thousands to Riverfest for the first time in two years. We are watching what could be a soggy forecast. Yeah, as you can see, we've got rain chances almost every day and some days may be wetter than others. It's certainly not what the organizers of Riverfest want to hear. We'll head to Port Natchez in just a minute. Yeah, first let's get to the latest from Patrick, and we are really hoping this isn't going to be a washout. Well, I am too, yeah. and you know, th it could be, and, and uh, again, there's certainly a potential for a bust in this forecast. Tomorrow is it's going to be the best out of the next four the way it looks. What about a 30% coverage in the triangle? It's going to be warm with highs in the mid-80s by Friday. Could be a 60 70 percent coverage and locally heavy rainfall as possible. Uh, sort of a break on uh, Saturday and then once again back to a uh, 70 percent coverage of showers and thunderstorms in the forecast. And the rainfall amounts could total one to three, but with this scenario, uh, it could be heavier rainfall than what is shown here through the next uh, four days. Otherwise, it's cloudy. It's still warm with temperatures in the mid to upper 70s. Not going to cool off too much. Coming up, we'll talk about gorilla hell in Central Texas in just a few minutes. Hopefully our other families and their children can come here and check out the new experience if they haven't been here before. It'll be a great time, I'm sure. Now, while the thrills and spills of the tunnel boat races don't start until this weekend, people are enjoying the first day of fun at the Port Natchez River Fest. Last year, River Fest had to be canceled, of course, because we were in the early days of the pandemic. And it took a real toll on the vendors who rely on these festivals, and it affected the larger economy. 12 News reporter Jordan James has been at the festival today tracking the impact. Jordan Riverfest is something that folks all across Mid County look forward to. As you can see behind me, the city of Port Natchez really comes alive for one of the city's favorite event. This is a moment that has been nearly two years in the making: the return of Port Natchez Riverfest. We are excited that this pandemic is slowly starting to get better, and that we can together as a community. Last year, the event was canceled due to COVID, but with statewide restrictions lifted, organizers decided to move forward with plans. It's going to be a good time. We've got wide open spaces. Wear your mask if you want to. If you feel OK without it, it's, it's, okay. it's up to you. Um, but it's going to be a great time. It's going to be a lot of fun. The return of River Fest has a whole new meaning for healthcare workers like Jill Petrie. Yeah. Yeah. After a year of isolation, working the front lines have been difficult. Being away from my family, these are my godchildren, and I love them, and have missed spending quality time and fun time out in the public with these kids. The event is expected to draw nearly 15,000 people through the weekend, and organizers say it's sure to be a much-needed boost to the local economy. All kind of people that come through Port Natchez oh and to God, Port Natchez, God. so all of the gas stations and restaurants and the stores, um, they see a, a lot of foot traffic this year, and that's, um, that's a great revenue boost for them. For some, this might just be a carnival, but for this community, it's a sign of progress. Be safe and make good choices and wash their hands, but try to have a good time and get back to some normalcy. If you missed out on tonight's fun, you can come out tomorrow. Riverfest runs till Sunday. You can find more information about this event on our website at 12newsnow.com. Reporting here live in Port Natchez, Jordan James, 12 News. Man, Jordan, we wanted to see you on a ride out there. So, you know, while there's no longer a mask mandate in Texas, Southeast Texas doctors hope you don't let your guard down at big events like the Riverfest and the upcoming YMBL South Texas State Fair. Speaker. The President of the United States. His, his presidency has been reshaped by the pandemic. From the inauguration to tonight's presidential address to Congress, scaled down and masked up. Tonight's speech coming on the eve of President Biden's first 100 days in office. Tonight he touched on a variety of things, including immigration, gun reform, and his American Families Plan. Biden's saying that America is rising anew. Tonight... I come to talk about crisis and opportunity, about rebuilding the nation, revitalizing our democracy, and winning the future for America. The president pointed to the nation's emergence from the pandemic as a vital moment, 
saying it would help rebuild the U.S. economy. And it's a time to fundamentally transform the role that the government plays in American life. After I promised we'd get 100 million COVID-19 vaccine shots in the people's arms in 100 days, we will have provided over 220 million COVID shots in those 100 days. Thanks to all the help of all of you. We're marshalling, with your help, everyone's help, we're marshalling every federal resource. Now, Senator Tim Scott delivered the Republican response, the senator saying that Biden has not fulfilled his campaign promise of bipartisan collaboration. We're going to home to Texas politics tonight. The education system has been through a whole lot this year. That includes losing a ton of money because of COVID-19 related problems. Texas officials secured $17.9 billion through two federal COVID relief packages. But until today, school officials and lawmakers say schools hadn't seen a dime. It is wrong that these federal education aid monies have not gotten out to schools that have suffered so much during this pandemic. I didn't vote for these monies to be in Greg Abbott's piggy bank. Well, now that part of the money has been released, superintendents are writing up their wish list. 12 News reporter Amelia White spoke with one district to see how it plans to use the money. Jordan Dage, what a great day for Texas public schools. Educators have been demanding for more money to properly support their students. Well, today their wish was granted. For Texas public schools, it feels like Christmas came early this year. It is a huge relief. We'll be, I think every superintendent in Texas will be able to sleep calmly, softly tonight. Port Arthur Superintendent Dr. Mark Portery says a weight has been lifted off the shoulders of district leaders all around Southeast Texas. $11.2 billion in federal funding is heading to public schools. It will be used to address students' learning loss and costs incurred due to the pandemic. Dr. Portery says they plan to put the money to good use. We're going to make sure that we are meeting the professional development needs of our staff members. Uh, we have technology. Uh, that we want to purchase. We have summer school learning that we want to extend. Uh, so we have a lot of ideas about that. Uh, recruitment, we have uh, facilities. The Texas State Teachers Association released a statement saying they are pleased that their demands are beginning to pay off for Texas school children. Portery says this last school year forced them to stretch every dollar and cent in their already low accounts. Uh, COVID was something that was un- unknown and when it came it came with a lot of expense not only uh, mental expense <laughs> but a lot of financial expense as well so with more money on the way portery is determined to give students the proper tools to help them succeed and our kids deserve so much they they're children and they deserve everything we can possibly give them TSTA says they plan to closely monitor the remainder of the legislator's budget to make sure there are no offset to these federal funds. I'm live in Beaumont, Amelia White, 12 News. Good information there, Amelia, and more from Austin. It's going to be a busy day in the state legislature tomorrow with lawmakers taking up several hot topics, starting with permitless carry. This would allow Texans 21 and older who are eligible to carry a gun to do so without a permit. Those guns can be opened in a holster or even concealed. The bill's already passed the House, but supporters are struggling to find enough votes in the Senate. If it passes, Governor Abbott says he's going to sign it. Now, the Senate's also set to take up a bill that just passed in the House to reduce penalties for possessing marijuana. It's one of several bills related to marijuana use making its way through the two chambers. Other bills seek to decriminalize cannabis possession, expand the state's medical marijuana program, and create studies on therapeutic psychedelics for military veterans. Meanwhile, Governor Abbott is prepared to sign a bill making alcohol to go permanent. Today, the Senate approved the measure allowing restaurants to sell beer, wine and cocktails in closed labeled containers with food orders. It's a holdover from the pandemic that will become permanent.
By the numbers, we've got positive news to share on the COVID front. Let's talk about this and take a closer look at some of the cases that we saw today uh, here in Southeast Texas. As I recall, around uh, 45 to 50 new cases, 42 in fact today, uh, 18 of those in Jefferson County and a handful elsewhere. When you look at the moving average, we're in excellent shape. Most days we're averaging fewer than 50 new cases. And there's equally positive news on the hospital front. We're averaging about 50 COVID patients split between general beds and the ICU. The patient percentages fluctuate a bit, but the hospitals seem to be managing quite well. You can see we have 15 ICU beds available. In case you missed the new surveillance cameras that have gone up at two hike and bike trails in Beaumont. City leaders added them after dozens of burglaries at the Gulf Terrace and Folsom hike and bike trails last year. Plans are in the works to add cameras at other city trails. I-10 back open through Lake Charles tonight after a strange standoff this morning. Police responded to this motel before daybreak to check out reports of somebody shooting toward the highway. A four hour standoff followed. When police moved in, they found somebody dead in a motel room. They haven't released that person's name or said how they died. A Vider man is in jail after an argument about how he was driving escalated. Police say Randy White shot a man in the back this morning from his pickup truck. The victim was taken to the hospital and is expected to be OK. Now White took off, but police and Orange County Sheriff's deputies were able to catch him near Linda Lane. He's now charged with aggravated assault. Three Georgia men awaiting trial for the murder of Ahmed Arbery have now been charged with federal hate crimes and attempted kidnapping in his death. The 25 year old was killed while jogging on a public street in February of last year. Investigators say the three men were armed when they used their pickup trucks to chase down Arbery, trap him and then kill him. No trial date has been set.